All right, it is Friday morning, November the 6th, and somehow Brandon Robertson and I made it to the same place. What's up, Brandon? Finally. Finally, finally. All right, no I'm, one needs uh, to know. No one needs to know. As far as everyone's <laughs> we this was all working out beautifully. So we are here. It's Friday morning, and uh, one of our favorite guest musicians and educators, Brandon Robertson, is with us for a topic today that we are calling practice for two hours a day with an exclamation point. And um, Brandon's got, it looks like his NASA shirt on today. So we are taking off and we are going places, people. And so everybody's muted for the courtesy of the session um, as usual. But if there are questions, we will get those to Brandon using the chat feature. Check out our studio resource at the education and outreach section of clearwaterjazz.com. You're going to find all the past Young Lions Jazz Master virtual sessions there. Brandon's got a bunch that are just fantastic. Uh, I'm going to read you some of them right now. Where do I begin as a professional musician? Breathe, relax, focus, simple tools during performance, raise the bar, preparing for performance, how to develop melodic bass lines, tempos and styles, how to develop endurance during a performance, thinking like a horn player from a bass perspective. <laughs> how to capture big sound on the bass, playing duo performances, creating new music composition and charts, accompanying a vocalist, and then today practice for two hours a day. We've got some more coming up with Brandon too. He's just been a regular and uh, really helping to build this wonderful treasure. We are so grateful for that. And uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors at Blue Water Wealth Management at Steward Partners for sponsoring that studio resource. And we'd also like to thank Marine Max Clearwater, who sponsors the podcast, the Young Lions Jazz Master Virtual Sessions podcast. You can stream, you can search that wherever you stream your podcasts. We're we're getting close to three thousand total plays in just a few months with the podcast. Wow, so super cool! Um, making these great resources accessible and free to students of all ages and abilities, which is important to Clearwater Jazz Holiday education and outreach mission so let me tell you a little bit about brandon we're going to turn it over to him brandon is an emmy nominated music director he's a professional upright electric bassist composer and music educator originally from tampa he completed his bachelor of arts in music from florida state university in 2009 and a master of music and jazz studies in the spring of 2016 currently he's the director of jazz studies and director of fgcu basketball band at florida gulf coast university in fort myers florida in 2018 brandon was nominated for an emmy award for best documentary for educational collegiate programs featuring the fgcu jazz ensemble he is a prominent band leader. He's taken his band on multiple national tours, headlining at some of the top jazz venues in the country. To add to that impressive resume, he's performed with notable acts such as the world-famous Count Basie Orchestra led by director St Scotty Barnhart, vocalist Carmen Bradford, Jason Marcellus, Marcus Roberts, Marty Morell, Wycliffe Gordon, many more. He's been featured as a performer, band leader at various national jazz festivals, and please check out his first debut album released not too long ago, Based on a True Story, B-A-S-S -S apostrophe D on a True Story. That was released in the fall of 2019, which reached all the way to number 16 on the iTunes Top 200, and Brandon's showing it to you for those watching this later. Uh, and, and now he's showing it on the video screen, or for those of you listening to the podcast who can't see that, but check that album out. It's really <laughs> wonderful. And Brandon's also going to be participating in one of the upcoming Clearwater Jazz Holiday Wanderlust uh, series. Um, I think it's on November 20th, 20th. One of our rooftop concert series um, where he'll be playing. And La Lucha is also part of that night doing a, a pretty cool like 80s theme night. So uh, we're really excited to have Brandon with us for that. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Brandon. Welcome back, man. Oh, man. Thank you guys, first of all, for having me back. It's always a wonderful time when I get to come here and do these virtual master classes. This is like family now. It's becoming more conversational versus educational now. It's like me just passing down knowledge to the next to the next youth. So if you're watching this, 
treat this as a conversation like as though we're just talking right but you're getting something out of it okay so for today uh, this is going to be very simple and not complex at all. You, it would only be complex if you make it that way, right? So <clears throat> I want to talk about how to practice in two hours. Now, why two hours? Here's, let's, let's back up for a second. So when I was in college, I was a struggling, young, naive musician who just wanted to play bass. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to go to class. I didn't want to do math, English, science, all the other stuff that you have to know how to do to, you know, function in life. I didn't need any of that because I just wanted to do music, right? And so what I would do is I would spend six to eight hours a day from my freshman till about my, yeah, pretty much all four years I was an undergrad, a day, three, four days out of the week in the practice room. I mean, bleeding my hands, just learning all these transcriptions, learning all these baselines, learning all of this information. And let me tell you guys, in four years, I wasted hours, thousands of hours <laughs> of not retention, of, of not retaining anything that I was learning, that I was trying to, that I was trying to comprehend nothing. And so what happens is when I graduated and then I got out into the real world, and I started playing. I noticed that all that stuff that I was shedding on for hours and hours, I couldn't play any of it. I couldn't play none of it. And I'm like, but I practiced this hours and hours. Why can't I do it? Well, psychologically, your brain has a only a short amount of attention span that it can it can you know comprehend in a, in a in a span of time. After a while, you check out. We all know this because you get like fatigue. You know, like when you go when you when you have a brain fart or you just been working all day and you just your thought process is just very dull. You just can't think of anything. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just you're just having a hard time just processing things, right? And so when you practice and you're just kind of trying to learn things by rote and just like, okay, I'm just going to listen and just do this. What are you gaining out of that? Are you actually practicing something or are you just learning something? So there's a difference between you learning something for the sake of whatever that intent is and then practicing something with the intent of knowing how to do it. So when we repeat, when we get up in the morning, we brush our teeth, we open the door. It's a repetitive practice is a daily routine so when you practice when you're doing music it's the same thing and if you don't think like that you will be spending times in the practice rooms for hours like i used to not accomplishing anything you think you are but then when the time comes for you to actually do it you can't because you're having to think about back a couple of hours ago what you did <laughs> and you didn't give yourself time to get a break let it marinate let it process you know, and then come back to it. So as now I am a professor and I teach, you know, I teach bass. I found that my students struggle practicing. They would come into their lessons and they wouldn't sound prepared, even though I know that they actually do practice because my students do practice, but they didn't sound prepared. So then I would ask the question, how long are you practicing? Oh, professor, I practice for... I practice for like, you know, four hours, five hours, and I'm doing everything you're showing me. Okay, tell me what you're doing when you're practicing. Well, I'm working on this and I'm doing. So you just were repeating the piece over and over, but you weren't actually practicing the parts that you couldn't play. You just were repeat. Well, that's how I'm learning it because that's what I could do. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm trying to like get it all under belt, under the under my belt, so that way when I come to your lesson, I'm prepared. But you're not because now you're practicing backwards. Now you're actually doing, you're going backwards. You're doing everything wrong. So I want to talk very briefly about how you can practice in two hours effectively. Now I believe it's uh, Kenny Warner who wrote out a book, uh, Masterful uh, Practicing. Uh, master masterful artistry you know something where you talk about you talk about how to practice and there's mindful practicing and then there's and then there's mindless practicing now mindless practicing is you playing stuff that you already know how to do 
and you making yourself feel good about the fact that you're practicing something that you can play. So you sound good at that, but you, you're not really learning anything because you can already do that. What you would actually learn from is the things that you can't do because you're practicing it. Right? So I tell my students in a two hour block, you should practice in 30 minute increments. And I'm speaking, I'm gonna break this down into three sectors. Sector number one, the two hour block, this sector is for high school students. You guys are in school for eight hours, seven hours out of the day, 8 a.m. till about two o'clock, 2.30, whatever. I don't know what, how, <laughs> I've been in high school for so long. But you guys are in school for a couple hours, you know, six, seven hours. Then if you have an extracurricular activity, which will consume about another two to three hours of your time after school. Now you're at home by five, six o'clock. At this point, you got homework. That might take up an hour, hour and a half. You got to eat dinner. So now it's nine o'clock. You're tired. When do I find time to practice? So in a day, a 24 hour day, if you're at school and you're in band or you're in orchestra, Anywhere, any instrumental ensemble, right? You take 30 minutes. If your teacher says, hey, you guys are going to just hang sections. With, okay, I'm going to take this 30 minutes to go practice. So this is what you do. In 30 minutes, if you're a high school student, you take 30 minutes to work on fundamentals. At the high school level, the fundamentals are most important because when you get to college, some of the fundamentals that you're expected to already know, you should have worked out. Because when you get to the freshman level, your, your applied teacher is going to expect you to know your major skills, your minor skills. You know how to play eighth notes uh, rhythmically correct, 16th notes triplets, 30 second notes, half notes, whole notes, quarter notes, whatever. You're expected to know this stuff. Theory wise, that's a different story because some, some high schools do not teach theory. And so in that case, we are all aware that it takes time for you to get to that point. But in terms of your fundamentals, like the mechanics of your instrument, there are things that you are expected to know. So if you're in high school and you're in marching band or you're playing some sports or whatever, you need to take 30 minutes to work on fundamentals. Work So if you're a woodwind player, work on your long tones, work on your breathing. If you're a brass player, work on keeping your armature nice and tight. Work on how the airflow punches, pushes out through your, through your uh, mouthpiece. Work on simple things that you know you can do fundamentally in time without having to rush through it, okay? And what you might think is monotonous and, re and redundant, doing that over and over, over a course of time, you're actually building endurance. You're building in, uh, the, the diligence to actually withstand certain performances. So especially if you're in marching band and you know during football season, you're blowing your chops off because you're having to play triple forte the whole time, right? But if you have great control over your entire area you will be perfectly fine okay and so practicing your fundamentals is important so for my high school students taking 30 minutes the first 30 minutes you're in school work on your fundamentals and then that next 30 minutes if you have a piece in, in, in your in your ensemble that you're working on, there's a specific part, like there's a couple of measures that you're just struggling with. Take that 30 minutes to work just on that. So the next 30 minutes after you've done your warm ups with your scales, your long tones, your fundamental exercises with playing maybe an etude or some kind of rhythmic exercise. Once you get through that, work on what I like to call your area of struggle. That's your next 30 minutes. Work on an area of struggle, specifically a specific area that you are having trouble with. That's one hour. That is very that is very uh, practical and it's, it's very intentional, okay? Then the next hour is where you do the review. So you take the next 30 minutes to, at some point of the day. If you get another 30 minutes, you can pick up your instrument. Then you go and take that 30 minutes and you review over the section, not the part, but the section that that part exists in, and then you connect what you were hurt, what you practiced before, and you try to connect it to what you can already do, and you review that, and you try to piece it together, and you just spend time doing that only for 30 minutes. Then the last 30 minutes, which will be concluding your two-hour practice session, will now be 
the the overall test so now you're testing yourself where you would play that passage and you would play it in time at tempo with the part that you were struggling with and you would continue to play that over and over and just keep testing yourself to see if you can do it now if you do this every single day two hours a day by the end of the week you would have have already accomplished 10 hours worth of practice an intentional mindful practicing so by the next week by the time your teacher hears you play that 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 specific passage they're going to know you worked on it because it's going to sound different. It's going to sound a lot together because you had intentionally worked on a specific area that you did not, that you were not able to do before. That is for high school students. Now that second sector that I was referring to would be for college students. Now you guys actually have a lot more freedom and a lot more time than high school kids because you are your own schedule. You make your own schedule. So whatever the time your classes are, you have things in between, you have gaps. So if you're a music student, the 30 minutes is very effective for you. So again, same process. Take the 30 minutes to work on fundamentals, work on your scales. Everybody hates playing scales, but I promise you, if you're a saxophonist and you play jazz, you're playing scales. If you're a bass player, you're walking scales. If you're a piano player, you're outlining a chord, which is part of a scale. You're, it, it's all encompassed. To, it all ties in together, okay? So spending the 30 minutes doing fundamentals. Then the next 30 minutes, you practice on specific areas that you know that you need to that you need to correct and piece together. And so it's, it's a little more intentional than what the high school students are doing. So now you're trying to really nitpick at exactly what you're doing, okay? Then that next 30 minutes, so this is an hour, that's the first hour. Then the last hour, whatever part of the day that you can split that, that, that hour up, you take that 30 minutes, do the same thing. You do a review where you're going to review only the areas that you worked on all right and in the last 30 minutes whatever that may be you perform it and you test yourself and you do this every single day and the more you do this the more you start to notice that your practicing is starting is going to window down to very specific and intentional things which is what you want you want to be very intentional because your time matters and if you're wasting time in the practice room not knowing what to do you're not going to gain anything. So it's not your teacher's fault if you're not getting better because you don't know effectively how to practice. So one of the things I want to encourage all of you who are watching this is ask your teachers, how do you practice? How do they practice? Or ask them, what is a practice resume that I can, that I can follow that would help me keep me structured when I am in the practice room. Okay. And so now my third sector is for, musicians who are just out playing you know just any not specifically who's in school but just someone who's you know just casually amateurly playing um what i've learned in intense what i've learned is and i've taught a lot of uh private lessons to folks who are who are you know non-professional musicians just you know just do it for a hobby i like to play and they always ask me like i don't know what to practice and you know and i tell them like well you practice for the gig, you know, so if you're playing, if you have an upcoming gig and you got a bunch of songs that you got to learn, you take it one step at a time. So you take a song, you want to first learn the melody. The melody is important because the melody gives you a lot of information. It tells you harmonically where it's moving. It shows you uh, it, diatonically how the song is moving as well, what key we're in. And so the melody gives you a lot of information. Once you learn the melody, then you need to know the form, learn the form. You know, the melody and the form are the two most important things. Those are two most important elements in music that you cannot forget, that you don't want to forget, right? And so you want to practice learning how to do that. And so I tell amateur musicians, like, you know, learn, take it, take it, break it up in, 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 in stride. So if you're doing two or three hours, you know, maybe take two songs a day and try to learn the melody and the form and try to see if you can play through it and memorize it where you got it down. And then the next day, now I'm gonna learn the, the harmony. I'm gonna learn the chords. So then you figure out the chords, just the chords. You just, work, you just take one thing at a time, okay? But when you practice, and that's for, that, that was my third sector, so I'm just gonna conclude that part. But to sum it all up, to sum it all up, 
I've I have found now in my busy schedule from teaching from <laughs> when I used to gig before COVID, uh, but from teaching and gigging and also being a, a, a family man, I, my time is so limited now. And so like, I have right now, you know, if I wasn't doing this, I would be practicing. My base is right here in the corner. I would probably be probably be working on uh, this concerto here. I'll show you in a second. Um, I'm working on this piece right here. This number uh, number four. I've been working on this now for the last uh, two weeks. And, you know, I'm just trying to keep my my arco chops going you know i i I've, I've been playing a lot more arco uh uh now with the bass and you know in order for me to play really solid jazz arco i need to be very fluent in how i move the bow and you know have really good bow techniques so playing these type of uh etudes and concertos are it's helpful and so taking the time i only have two hours a day so i take 30 minutes before i have to teach or something and i'll just practice a specific section i'll probably only do eight measures that's it that's my practice time and i'm okay with that because i know i was very intentional and then lastly this is the most very this is the most important thing out of everything i just said make sure you record all of your practice sessions it is vital it is super important that you record all of your practice session you need to hear yourself it's going to be torturous i promise you you're going to hate it you're going to hate it for the first few months but as you start to hear yourself get better you're motivating yourself that's more encouraging to hear you actually progress and doing very well and now you're like wow i don't sound as bad as i did a few months ago and it's very encouraging to hear that so please always make sure that you record yourself i make my students it's part it's in their syllabus they're required to record every lesson so they can go back and hear themselves from day one versus the end of the semester and usually they always come to me and say wow i sound completely different now but that's because when you hear yourself back and you start to hear things that don't sound the way it did before that's encouraging that's telling you that you are getting better you need some kind of uh documented proof that you are actually getting better so always record yourself and you when you record yourself you can hear what you sound like so if there's things that you want to fix in your sound you know exactly what to intentionally uh, work on and that is my conclusion for today's session of how to practice in two hours or two hours. It's as easy as that, man. <laughs> no, that's awesome. No, really, really great advice uh, for all the students watching this. Um, uh, really exciting to have you continue as part of these, Brandon. I'm, I'm trying to look on the, set, the section now because I, I feel like we've got a part two coming up with you as well on the accompanying a vocalist. Yeah, we do. Yes. Uh, Friday, yes. Friday the 13th. Yes. Awesome. So, um, um, what? Any thoughts about what you uh, plan to do for that session yet? Or are you still working on it? Well, uh, I'm working on some things behind the scenes. I'm actually trying to to get a vocalist. Uh, I have a vocalist in mind. I've spoken to her. We're trying to we're trying to work it out. If cool. not, uh, worst case scenario is I could just play Thelonious Monk Friday the Thirteenth for everybody. <laughs> call it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a plan, and you're back with us, too, on Friday, December 4th with a topic, Know Your Worth, Negotiating the Gig. So that should be pretty cool. What are your thoughts and, on that one? Yes. Let me – Um, I won't take up too much time, but let me chime in on that real quick. Okay, so I have – this topic came up because I have a student, a current student here at the university. He just put together his first band and he went through a situation at his first gig where he got swaddled out of some money from the booking person because he didn't know how to he didn't know how to negotiate what he needed to do. He called me that night. Luckily, my wife was happy enough to to say brandon go take care of that because he said your student sounds really upset right now and i was like thank you baby. but i got on my student like don't call me that lady what's wrong with you anyways he called me and he was in tears like mad like he's like professor I, how did this happen and i said let's have a conversation and we talked the next day he told me what happened and i said you know what yeah, I think this needs to be a topic that I need to talk in one of my classes. 
you know and so when we uh when we were talking about the next couple of sessions i said oh this will be a perfect segue for me to do this on and talk about how do you get your worth know your worth and how to ask for it because if you're a young musician starting out trust me they're going to smell it <laughs> i did my first gig 50 bucks for four and a half hours yeah four and a half hours i was 18 in tallahassee when i got to, when i got to florida state i was so happy because i got a gig and people look at me crazy when i tell that story and they said you got paid 50 dollars for four hours you missed the point i was 18 years old i had never made music before i never made money playing music before like like on my own like i played in church and stuff but like you know that's kind of like you know you're, you're up and coming but when you're on your own out on your own not living at home and you made money playing music that was exhilarating for me i didn't care how much it was the fact that i knew i could do it changed the whole course of the rest of my career my journey in life i knew i wanted to do music so to to that session i'm going to speak on how do you how do you hype yourself to make the venue believe that you can actually do what you say because you cannot go in front of somebody and say you can do something and then you get there and you can't that right there will look really bad so we're going to jump into it we're going to have a conversation about it yeah that's going to be a great very valuable really important stuff i know there's a lot of young musicians that exist around our greater community of support mm -hmm. and that perform in different contexts and i think that um, this type of information is really important for and, sure and will be received really well so on behalf of clearwater jazz holiday foundation thank you for participating today everybody brandon thank you for being part of this and thank for you guys again. watching or listening in the future um you know we hope that you've been enjoying finding good value in these we certainly are having fun putting them together and feel really proud about all of it so until we meet again stay safe out there be well keep playing and we'll see everybody real soon See you guys later. Take care. Take care, Brandon.